Hello everyone and welcome to an IVA only moon landing in stock Kerbal Space Program. This is in KSP 1.8 and what you see here is me putting together the rocket for the job, one that has a broad delta V margin, as will prove to be necessary. I conducted the mission during a live stream on Twitch while listening to the Apollo 13 mission audio in sync with the 50th anniversary of the launch of the mission, thanks to ApolloInRealTime.org. I decided not to go with an Apollo replica or a stock Apollo replica for this mission because that would require docking the lunar module to the command and service module on ascent from the moon and that was a complicated thing that I didn't want to get into during this live stream. And that's because I wanted this live stream to be the first time I successfully did an IVA only moon mission. I had tried them before, once while building a LEGO Saturn V. Uh, that did not work out, I missed the moon. And then earlier during the stream, from what you see, I attempted the mission twice before we got to in sync with the Apollo 13 audio. So those were test runs. I knew what I was doing. But I missed the moon both times on those test runs. So then I did one run where I had the UI up and I was not in IVA view to see what I did wrong before doing this definitive version in sync with the audio. So that was the plot here. Now I am going to present the full unedited version of the mission for verification purposes. And as a result, because this is a live stream, there's gonna be a lot of chatter and you won't be able to see the other end of the conversation. I'm sorry about that, but that's just how it's gonna be. Uh, I did bring up the UI once in a moment of weakness during the main mission to check the electric charge, I think, if I recall correctly, so sorry about that. But that was early on and I wasn't able to see my orbital parameters, so it was just to check the electric charge. And I was sort of shocked that the Mark 1 pod didn't have an electric charge meter or something. I, I, going into the stream, I thought that the pods had more instruments than it turned out that they did. It turned out that they had fewer things than I was expecting. So that made it difficult. I did calculations using my graphing calculator and a pad of paper. Uh, so I was a little bit proud of that, but I seem to have done the calculation sloppy because I really needed a lot of extra delta V to make it work. Anyway, so with all the things that are going to go wrong, uh, I will present this version that you will see here. It's far from a perfect attempt, but here we go with the original audio. 25 seconds and counting and Apollo 13 yeah. is go. T minus 20 seconds, T minus 20 seconds and counting. 17, guidance release. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence has started. Okay, ignition sequence start. 5, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1, and go. We have commit and we have to have a 2 All right. My dynamics officer says the trajectory looks good. We show a one half mile in altitude at this time. 13 Houston, go in 30 seconds. Roll complete and we're pitching. Roger that. We've been pitching for a while here. <laughs> Okay, that's the boosters out. All sources continue to report for a go. The trajectory on our plot boards is right on the pre pre plot line. Right on and the booster engineer reports we're now through the region of maximum dynamic pressure. We're go. Okay, here we go again. Okay, 
Minutes, minutes, 50 odd hours. I can't calculate it in minutes. Yeah, a few days in into the mission, they have the problem. Not that they don't have a problem right now soon. They'll have that too. Okay, we're approaching Apoapsis. A little bit lower than last time. Well, uh, it's uh, it's not exactly 50, Farafell. It's something around there. You'll have to look up the exact time. Space things don't happen that fast except during launch. <laughs> okay, well that was Apoapsis. Okay. Reports that the cabin pressure is sealed at 6.1 pounds, which is normal. We're now 250 miles downrange, altitude 81 nautical miles. So that's uh, 96,600 or so. And at 5 minutes 30 seconds into the launch, we continue to look very good on the second stage. Jim Lovell just reported the inbound engine from the morning schedule. That shouldn't have happened. We're going to take our time in low carbon orbit to verify that this is all good. Okay, and that's 91,000 kilometers. I mean, 91,000 meters. Jim, uh, Houston, we don't have a story on why the import out was uh, early, but the uh, other engines are go and you're go. Should be no problem, Jim. Tacos and astronaut juice, very good. Very appropriate. Houston, level sensor on time, 8 plus 3, 8, nominal. 
S2 cutoff time 9 or plus 4 8. Over. Stand by. Roger, not all of the little men, uh, 9 or 4 8 on the uh, engine cutoff. That's affirmative, and stand by for S4 B to orbit. I'm trying to calculate the velocity again. Roger, we have S4 B to orbit. Even though that hasn't worked out great for us the previous times. I got 3,104. Last time it was 3,070. Anyway, we have to find the moon for. Oh, I forgot to target the moon! Well, that didn't really help last time anyway. Well, there's the moon. And at 8 minutes 17 seconds, we show a velocity of 18,000 feet per second. Uh, do we have SAS? percent of the amount needed for minimal orbit. At 8 minutes 35 seconds, continuing to burn on the second stage. All four remaining engines looking good at this point. Mark level sense arm, Pike. Apollo 13, Houston, mark level sense arm. Mark level sense arm, Roger. C and C's go flight. Pike. Okay, we go at 9, Capcom, and the CMC's go. Apollo 13, Houston, at 9 minutes, you're go, the CMC is go. Hey, Jim. 13, Roger. Okay, you shift, rest is go. Our predicted shutdown time on the second okay, stage is 9 minutes 48 sure. seconds. Go, flight go, flight go, director Milton go. Wendler getting a staging go, status go. now from his flight controller. 13 Houston, you are go for staging. 13 Roger, go for staging. Now flight to star, so we allow the S2 to burn through the gate. Roger. Just looking for the moon here. Yep, there it is. Okay. Stand by for mode 4 capability. Apollo 13, Houston, stand by for mode 4 capability. Mark. Mark, you have mode 4, Jim. Mode 4, Roger. Staging. And level Roger, report staging. And S4 ignition, Houston. Thrust okay, Flash. Roger that, okay. Jim. Thrust looks good. Roger. And Seems like our inclination is a little bit off. I'll try and correct some of that. Ignition. Thirteen Houston, you're looking oh, good. Oh, I forgot to ditch that stage. CMC are all go. Thank you, Joe. And at ten minutes thirty seconds, we are now one hundred two miles in altitude, one thousand eighty miles down range. Thirteen Houston at eleven minutes. Your go predicted cutoff on the S four B is twelve plus three four over. Okay, we'll take the 3070 on the previous test and see how that works out for us. Oh, I'll toss on a few extra meters per second. All right, let's see, where's the moon now? There it is. Coming up on 
12 minutes, still looking good. Okay. Are we shut down at Yeah, shut down at Let me try and get the velocity and the moon in the same shot. <laughs> Seco, Jim, we're looking at the disc. Roger. Flight final looks good, stand by. Okay. And the flight dynamics officer says at first glance we look good on the orbit. They're in orbit. I'm already on my way to the moon. Flight well, Friday. different moon. So we've got to go orbit all sources, and the booster has been safe. Okay, Capcom, the orbits go, the booster is safe. Apollo 13 Houston, you have a go orbit all sources and the booster is safe, over. Go orbit and the booster is safe. Thank you, Joe. Don't mention it. <laughs> I think that's Joe Kerwin. We'll be hearing a lot from him. Houston, we copy your noun 44. Yep. Okay, Joe. Okay, got it. Uh, you see the, the two row yet for the verb 66? Yeah, it's completed it yet. Flight is getting set up this time. Terminated P11 and working with Joe okay. Kerman? Maybe that's what you should, uh... Will Wheaton or Clint Eastwood? Well, Will Wheaton would be funnier. Because that's his name. <laughs> oh, it's going up now. Oh, shoot. So we didn't have an interface. Uh, what do we do? Um... Hmm. I think we should go this way. Okay, Capcom, everything's looking good. The S4B is doing all the right things and uh, yeah, looking good down here. Roger, Flight I'll uh, wait till we get in orbit. Flight Fido. Go. Preliminary orbit 102.5 by 100.3. Right, 102.5 by 100.3. Oh no. Apollo 13 Houston, uh, your preliminary orbit down here is 102.5 times 100.3, and everything is looking good. Roger, Houston, and it looks good to be up here again. I'll bet. Oh, it's going okay, down again. And Parking angle, Z torquing angle is plus point point two six flight plus, plus point decimal two six. Okay, Capcom, yeah. Z torquing plus decimal two six. Apollo thirteen, Houston. I have your Z torquing angle. You ready? The interface speed was one hundred eighty-eight last time. Uh, Jack, we have copied you. Okay, it's plus decimal two six over. Yeah, it's okay, a pet. We have eight minutes here to canaries. That's uh, what I've read. I have not had experience with said pet. If anybody but. has any problems we want to bring up, Booster, you clean? I clean, Flight. Okay, Retro? I'm go, Flight. Okay, Fido? We're go here, Flight. Guys? We're go, Flight. Okay, GNC? We're go, Flight. Ecom? What's good, Flight? It appears he missed the fuel cell reactant valve, so Norm. We'll stand by on that. Okay. <gasps> they missed something on the checklist. Shocking. Can we wait for the can Okay. We can wait for the canaries. Right. Roger. Okay, Capcom, I guess you're squared away. Surgeon, you happy? That's a firm dead flight. Okay, Enco. Go, flight. Everything looks good. Okay, FAO. Looks good, flight. Network, you're happy. And, Roger, uh, hey, flight. And we've got anything here. You think you've gotten it all? 
this is mission control. Oh, there we go. We've entered the moon's SOI. God knows what our periapsis is, but here we are. Uh, the speed is a little bit less than last time. So I don't know. Are we on a crash course? Who knows? Hmm. Well, let's find out. At least we're in the SOI finally. We're standing by now for acquisition of signal through the Canary Island station. We should be reacquiring radio contact with the spacecraft shortly. Flight Newark, go. CVTS was calling on 111. I didn't promise anything about kabooms. No, it doesn't look like we have a very close periapsis, which I suppose is better than having a negative periapsis, but though I could probably manage a negative periapsis. That wouldn't be too bad. Okay, okay, so let's make some calculations again. So, if we wanted a circular orbit right here, well, we don't even know our altitude right now. Um, not exactly. How many, how many hundreds of kilometers does that look like to you? No, I thought I had made note of the moon's uh, gravitational parameter. It doesn't seem like I did. That's about all we'd be able to tell. You didn't see anything obvious happen to the engine that, that you could tell down here anyway. That, that's true. Whatever happened, happened off quick. Oh, there it is. I have it there. Okay. So, if this velocity was in a circular orbit, we'd be in a 203 kilometer orbit. We're still going up, it looks like. Oh, we, well, we are going up. That's... Oh heck, let's just slow down a bit. Understand. We'll deal with the consequences eventually. This is Apollo Control. We're still standing by for uh, any conversation with the spacecraft over Canary Islands. Uh, the booster systems engineer reports that at this point he has no explanation uh, for the early shutdown of the S2 uh, Saturn second stage Apollo center 13. engine. Okay, a couple minutes to LOS, Jim. Everything is looking real good. Uh, your AOS time at uh, Carnarvon will be 52.36. 
and uh, we don't have too much of a handle on why the inboard uh, cut off early, except that it apparently was an engine problem and not a uh, not a switch select function. But uh, we're certain that you'll be able to make TLI. Okay. Based on what we're well, now. hopefully that'll get us closer to the surface. Too close? Right. Who knows? But we'll keep an eye on the moon to make sure it's not too close. All right. Well, they already had the engine problem. That was on the second stage. I really need to keep an eye on the moon, though. Apollo 13, Houston, Canary LOS in 30 seconds. Request command reset, please. All right, Canary, come on. Thank you. Hey, you guys, are oh, you ready? Uh, another I'm wonderful ready, uh, sound they've discovered. Ah, the sound inside the command module. Houston, request a little bit rate, please, over. Okay, uh, booster flight. Booster flight. Go ahead, flight. Okay, okay, give me the number one. Okay, number one. And, uh, Helium temperature is 80, unit pressure is uh, 4100, and the manifold pressure is about 100. Manifold is about 100, okay. Okay, Fred, uh, what's the cabin and suit doing before we... Uh, they're both... Uh, looks like we're still a bit high. Okay, so more retrograde. Lickety split. Still going up. Well, yeah, I mean, if you want a cleaner version, that's in my Around the World in 80 Planes series. That only has the PAO loop. But it helps if you're hearing with headphones, which I am, of course. Because some of the conversations are through the right ear and the other through the left. Well, you'll need multiple transcripts. I don't know how easy it is to look at multiple transcripts at the same time. I could try and get the... I mean, I can get the transcript of what the astronauts are talking about, but not the other conversation. Gentlemen, I'll break out my two gold pins. The longest uh, 
Mm. It's got to take some figuring to do that, even. Oops. I don't know if I'm... Well, yes, for determining kill down in progress. That's just the uh, uh, flight controller. Please. They have they have a whole thing here, but I actually wanted the onboard thing. Shoot. Uh, boost the flight. Uh, boost the flight. When did you lose those? <laughs> How do I get just the people on the flight instead of the flight controls? I can select just the flight controllers. I mean, the website itself, Apollo in real time org, will let you select audio sources. Playing Eve, that's another thing I could do. Hmm. Been a long time. Okay, let's see. At 352, 36, we're going to pick them up over some areas. And, gentlemen, you're now passing the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. Man, I never thought you guys want to take a look at look at the uh, future thing. I was going to turn out the footlights. I wanted to show Ken. You want to turn out all the lights in just a second. You can see thunder and lightning on the horizon. Sure as hell can. And also, uh, you might be able to, if your eyes come accustomed to it, you might be able to see the uh, the air glow. And there you can. You can see the air glow. Yep, I sure can. See that and air I glow? see that light too. Oh, I, I won't be able to see this. Hey, that's, uh, They're sightseeing, uh, basically, Mr. Right? Doobie. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's, it's not it super critical. Right yeah, it is. Right in it. And then right below that, way about a half a degree, that's uh, the next car down. Yeah. Yep. So, uh... The glow of the horizon, I think, is what they're talking okay, about. Yeah, uh, I'm ready for the main rake check, Fred. Okay, go ahead. I'll tell you. The what atmosphere. You just call it on. Atmospheric okay. glow. Main rake B, going close. The cabin pressure is like what? No, no. They'd say aurora if they meant aurora. No, the glow of the atmosphere. Did you push the test? I think. Yeah, there it is. Good. Okay. I can't read minds or anything, but. I feel like maybe this is a hundred kilometers above the moon. I don't know. We'll see. Well, I mean, these these tapes uh, from the cockpit are only recently arranged. I mean, they had it all on reels, but we I I hadn't listened to it before. Um, a fellow put it all, all together and digitized it for this website. And there's the vice president trying to make a speech in the left ear. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I uh, flew mine on eight. Uh, 
He has a few of the best. Jack can take his off. He's the best one around. Right. Twin. Is this, does this look like 20 kilometers now chewed over the moon? Hmm. Man, I tell you, that first thing. Well, if we see the radar altimeter going, we know we're in trouble. <laughs> uh, keep an eye on that. Okay. I'm gonna try and level out here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Stop that. Okay. So four four thousand oh sorry, four kilometers above the lunar surface right now. I don't know if he's thrown up yet. I was a little bit busy controlling this. I think they're still just sightseeing. Whoa. He, he is, he's a nice guy. I mean, Jim certainly has his head in the clouds. So I can see why you'd see. I mean, Jack Swagger is sort of quietish and elusive. So that does leave Fred Hayes as earthy, if you will. Oh, we're on surface velocity. I can't even change that. Oh, no, I can't. Lift this button. Okay. Oh, well, at least some button works in here. These are potentially clickable things, but I don't know what they are. Yeah, that's good. Good to be open about such things. Well, now I suppose I have to spot landing locations. But let's get to a slightly higher orbit. Thanks for following, Probsco. Hmm. Uh, I think we should just go with 15 kilometers, will be fine. They're taking pictures right now. Let's see, what is the velocity, circular velocity at 15 kilometers above the surface? Let me see. The ordeal. They're already talking about the ordeal, Mr. Doobie. <laughs> 550, all right. Um, So that should be roughly circular at 15 kilometers. Let's see. We're still going up though. 
Okay, well, it's 20. Okay, what is it at? 23 and a bit. Well, Jack is still doing okay. Uh, Fred, I suppose, was the one asking the question, so I don't think he's sick yet. 539. Okay, I'll put the cable for you. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like our altitude's changing that much now. Okay. I'll try, Mr. Doobie. I'll try. Maybe we'll even get to see their TV transmission beforehand. If they've got that video. I don't know what would be a good landing spot. Curb and rise. Well, we'll go around one more time and then we'll worry about it. We should be in communication with Kerbin and everything, that's important. Is there a button to EVA in an emergency? Hmm. Okay, so dark side of the moon. Yeah, I got it. I got, I got my. If I get my hand down there, I got it made. I might want to parachute on the back end of this because it re. Um, I, I suddenly realized that I didn't tune the parachute right. Well, I, I can just wait on deploying the parachute. Okay. That's Come that's on. okay. Good, that's good. Off. Off. Okay, about one more shot. Okay, there's Kerbin. We can start our descent now. Windows bloody useless. I mean, it isn't the lander can, so I guess that's my fault. 
because yeah. I wanted to make this simpler, but... Is the radar in for Well, but, uh, okay, well, you got the tool and you're over there, Jim. Do you think you can get to secondary rapid check? Uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's the guy way down there. The very... Well, run through it, Jack. It's easy. I don't want to go down more than 100 meters per second, so we got to mo uh, moderate that a bit. I'm still on the transfer stage. We have to let go of that at some point. Oh, this will work. No problem now. Gotta leave it there for 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit intimidating though. Holy. I don't like seeing the moon like this very much. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to ditch the previous stage now. And Okay, it seems like we've got an engine. That's always good. That was the explosion of our previous stage on the surface. I don't know what that was the explosion of. Uh, there wasn't supposed to be two explosions. Where's the ground? Okay, uh, Jack, did you ever get my main B breaker in down there? Yes, I did. Your co-op. Oh, there's the ground. Shut down. And, uh, get me to verify that the rad and the reaction... Well, I have a window. It's just not the best view. <laughs> we are on the moon. Yay. GDC is aligned. Okay. Confirm we are on the moon because we gotta leave now. What we gotta do is uh, get the cameras and the TV camera out next. We're about to hit. Okay. 105. All good. I could tilt my head like this. I'm not gonna step outside because that won't be EVA only. Uh, it won't be IVA only. No, no EVA. Those are the rules. IVA only. Okay, we're going up now. Okay, still pressing on in here. 
We did it. I mean, we can see here that we're on the moon. We need to go back home, though. This is the tough part. Yeah, but you don't get the helmet view. So that's cheating. Now trying to get back to Kerbin is... I don't know how, actually. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. I think we're looking for 550 meters per second or so. Okay, so we're not in a circular orbit, but we should be in a good orbit. How you doing, Good. Hey, uh, how about that? You need, uh, I, uh, technically, uh, that I could have gotten a crew report if they had a button for it, but I have no idea how to get a crew report without right-clicking the pod. So... So we have to figure out when I'm supposed to actually burn for Kerbin. That's problem number one. I, Because if we burn at the wrong time, we'll go on escape. <laughs> There's one good direction and one really bad direction. And then it's a matter of how much in figuring out our periapsis around Kerbin so we don't go in too steeply. Considering my inaccuracies doing this whole mission so far, I don't have a whole lot of hope, but... We're going counterclockwise around the moon. Let me draw myself a diagram. It's a little bit after Kerbin Rise, I think. Yeah, yeah, but that's looking on the map from the top view, Mr. Doobie. 
Now, how do you do it from in here? Not knowing where in your orbit you are. Where are we in relation to the moon's orbit around Turbin, right? Because you have to orient the map right. We don't even navigate by the stars around here. That would help. If we could navigate by the stars, that would be a huge plus right now. But uh, navigating by stars depends on where the moon is at the time. Where the moon is in its orbit. So it's actually time dependent. Sounds uh, marginally acceptable. For a new CMP to build. Yeah. Very good. Okay, uh, 13, we got nothing for you at the moment. Everything's looking good. We're looking at your data now. In the west. Right. Yeah. That's That's... It's complicated because I didn't notice whether the moon was in one part of its orbit or the other. So, I don't know whether pointing at Orion is a good thing or a bad thing. And then once we get to the right time, how, how much do we burn exactly? That's another question. We certainly need to get on escape from the moon. That's minimal. It's a big mountain right there. Well, there's the sun. That doesn't actually help us navigate in this situation very much. Unless I had noted the sun's location ahead of time. Come on, Kerbin, where are you? Up oh, there it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna try is, and hope that this is right, is when Kerbin reaches the bottom of the window when the surface of the moon is at the top. I don't know what angle that actually is. But right now we're basically at a 12 o'clock position, and I'm trying to get that 11 o'clock or. Is, yeah, 11 o'clock position. Yeah, it's not brilliant yet. It's brilliant if it works. Pretty good flight. We'll get back with you on these mirrors in a Okay. Okay, well, that's an angle. I mean, there's actually more of the window here, but... We'll go with this, I think. Okay, prograde. Well, astrolabe and the ability to use one. 
Master Leave in my hands isn't very useful. So escape velocity is 807 around the moon. We need to at least beat that out. Then we'll figure more things out. So here we go. At least we don't have to worry about food, water, and oxygen. Jeez. This is mission control at 57 minutes, 15 seconds. Uh, not much conversation with the crew on this pass over the Carnarvon tracking station. Uh, Jack Swigert reported that uh, the platform had been aligned as called for in the flight plan. Uh, there's not okay, a great deal of activity uh, scheduled in the flight plan at this time. Uh, flight Director Milton Wendler has uh, checked the status with his flight controllers and Capcom Joe Kerr will be passing that up to the crew shortly. I think that should be okay. Hopefully. Well, we're definitely, we are definitely going to be leaving the moon one way or another. Assume an apoapsis? Well, we'll see exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, I'll do a number of calculations, but assuming a periapoapsis uh, and periapsis is rough. Because, I mean, I don't even know. Uh, we, we only have 100 kilometers here. I don't know what the fourth digit or fifth digit might be. Because the moon is 12,000 kilometers above the moon, but we've got at most three of those digits. So... Okay, we are in Kerbin SOI now. We've had loss of signal now with the spacecraft uh, through Carnarvon. So we are going down pretty precipitously. Of the tracking antennas at the Honeysuckle Creek Australia station in less than a minute. We'll stand by for. That's uh, usually good. We can force this to be our apoapsis by sort of pulling up. Um. I don't know. Let's see if this was a circular. But it doesn't matter if it's a circular orbit. I don't think it's a circular orbit. No. Okay, so 341 and going up right now. And at one hour, ten minutes into the flight of Apollo 15, That's a very big number. Requiring <laughs> radio contact with the spacecraft through Honeysuckle Creek momentarily. Recapping briefly the situation during the launch. I don't know if we have lots of fuel for braking. Maybe. We could probably do some of that, but we're probably going to use a lot of it to figure out how to even approach Kerbin. minutes and 30 seconds, at which time the... Inboard engine, engine number I get like 30, uh, uh, so there's a radius of 30,000 kilometers, so that doesn't seem right to me. But we need to keep an eye on Kerbin now. As long as we're going down, at least we're going in the right direction. Joe Kerwin has just put in a call to the crew. Uh, we've had acquisition of signal. We'll stand by for conversation with the spacecraft. Apollo 13, Houston through Honeysuckle. Roger, Houston 13 here, breathing loud and clear. Okay, yes, band sounds good, Jim. But I don't want to be like. burning up really quickly or anything. Uh, 
I don't know, it seems like we're gonna miss, but I've approached I've approached the earth like this before. And it seems like you gotta miss, and then suddenly you drop in. So hmm. And the closer you are, the harder it is to correct that. I mean our vertical speed is maxed out, I don't even know how fast it's going. I think we're gonna be too steep into the atmosphere. So I'm going to combination retro and pull up. Flight GNC. Go. Okay, the, the drift computations come out to 5.8 minus 5.8 Miru and X. Zero and Y. Minus 8.6 is the, this is a 45 minute, uh, roughly 45 minute sample. Okay, so, uh, what's your recommendation? Go with it. I don't like not seeing the Earth, though. I wonder if there's a way I can rotate. Hmm, not really. That's a lot of meters per second downward. Go ahead, 13. Flight booster. Go. All our system data looks good across the uh, uh, Australian pass here. You're, you're coming in okay. weak. I didn't quite copy it. Okay, well, we're less than a vertical speed of 1,000 yeah, meters per uh, second. That's something. Oh, well, let me see where the earth is right now. Okay, well, we can keep going yeah, towards it, that's for sure. Go to TV and crank it up and leave it on. Okay. Understand it's, uh, it's, it's, it's okay to fly now. Yeah, so you expect, uh, you expect him to be in a I mean, TV we can see the KSC there. from here. Right, uh, that's right. And I'll and I'll command the tape recorder and the TV at Milo. Okay. Well, watch his face again. That way, Capcom. So he's KT. Right, your place. And the booster's all. It looks like we're gonna miss it. Going That's good, ish. Okay, I'm ready to stop it here pretty quick. Milo. Thirteen, yes. Okay, we're going uh, up what, again. What TV was that? I think there's like 120 kilometers, doesn't it seem like? Okay, 13, uh, uh, yeah, I just to, uh, put on the Jeb. Jeb is the pilot. To, uh, to up there. It doesn't look like Roger, our velocity is uh, very high. And, uh, you've got to go for that. You can uh, turn it on, go to TV, and uh, we'll see you there. I burned off speed. a lot of it already. Okay. Uh, Capcom flight. I guess I'm just using that side to me like he expected to send a signal to the honey No, he said it A.O. He has me suck it up. So it's LSLOS. No, that's right. He's got it straight. Okay, network flight. Flight network. Why are you so low? Okay, 13 Houston, uh, LOS Honeysuckle in about 30 seconds. Oh, they've got a sound from the audio too. Plus 28, plus 43. Quick save is cheating, obviously. Thirteen Houston, did you copy your AOS time? We've had LOS flight. Oh, we're going higher than I thought we would. No, I don't. It could be yes. So the downlink goes normal. Yeah, the downlink was normal. We've had loss of signal now from the spacecraft. At our last look, everything appeared to be normal with the spacecraft and the launch vehicle. We currently show an orbit of 103.2 hmm. nautical miles. Yes, indeed. Actually, uh, 
Okay, so now we're going down. Uh, well, I, I'd like to go around one more time. Let's see what our periapsis is. Yeah, let's just let's just take it slow. Let's just take it slow. At which time you heard the crew advise that they will be configured for the TV transmission, which is scheduled to occur at about one minute or one hour thirty six minutes over the Mila station. The post-launch post uh, press Go conference is scheduled to begin shortly at uh, Cape Kennedy. No problem at all that I know of. At uh, one hour, seven minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Up, oh, we're going up again. Okay, all right, what's the speed? Uh, 2,225. Let me just get a... We're going to attempt to uh, conduct this post-launch okay, conference uh, between uh, uh, here. communications the with the spacecraft. Launch. This gives us approximately some 20 minutes. We'll do our best to try and get as many uh, ahead, questions in at that uh, time, but I'll, I'll be standing by for a signal also okay, so we can go back now. to air ground at the proper York time so that you can keep up with everything. Let's pretend we're at 120 kilometers. Caprian, Director of Launch Operations for the Kennedy Space Center and Launch Director for Oops, Flight. Oops, but I need to factor in the diameter of Kerbin. It's a pleasure to see you uh, on a clear day for a change. Uh, I guess uh, there really isn't too much to uh, report to you as far as the countdown itself is concerned. Okay, and then what if we were at 220? We, uh, I think we're more like at 220. Then, because otherwise, 120 gives me our current velocity, which uh, definitely isn't circular. Uh, 2074. Beppy was awesome. And, and, you know, Mio. Don't forget little Mio. Problems with the spacecraft. Uh, at approximately one hour and uh, 50 minutes before launch, uh, we did uh, run into a little difficulty with a lock spent valve in the S1C stage, which uh, uh, we were attempting to uh, cycle open and close as required for the venting process, and uh, it stuck on us in the, uh, in the full open position. Slingshots are so, hard to figure out. We through a repeated number of cycles attempting to, uh, to free it, and uh, for some time we were unsuccessful in doing so. It uh, causes concern in that uh, if we had not been able to close the vent valve, we would not have been able to pressurize the LOX tank at T minus 72 seconds. However, we did run some uh, uh, nitrogen gas uh, through the system. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to figure out the orbit. Well, I mean, I know there's a way, but I wonder if there's a way I can figure out the orbit right now from uh, the velocity at apoapsis and periapsis. Well, I tried to get that. Um, maybe I can just add them, average them out, and then figure out from there what our altitude actually is. Oop, there's a sound they discovered again. Perfectly nominal. You may have noticed Perfectly it seemed uh, almost like an eternity before the uh, vehicle cleared the tower. Well, that, of course, was because uh, this is the heaviest ve vehicle that we've flown. It was approximately 26,000 pounds heavier at liftoff than Apollo 12. And the uh, S1C engines, though they were perfectly within specification, uh, it's saying that. We're rated at about 100 uh, our average velocity, we'd be at an altitude of uh, on the 1,065 kilometers. Uh, oh, wait, but I haven't subtracted the, uh, out the 600. Uh, the time, uh, 465 kilometers. second longer in, uh, in clearing the tower. All of the uh, first stage burn, as I mentioned earlier, was perfectly nominal. The second stage burn was nominal up until the time that... Uh, the S2 inboard engine uh, cut off. That engine is uh, normally cut off by a switch selector command approximately 90 seconds before the uh, outboard engines are cut off. For some reason that we have not been able to determine at this time, the engine did cut itself off approximately two minutes earlier than planned. Now, as a result of that having happened, 
The outboard engines, of course, burned approximately a half a second longer. They burned to uh, fuel, de fuel depletion and made up uh, some of the uh, energy that was lost by virtue of the inboard engine having cut off early. And when we burned the S4B, it uh, burned approximately uh, half a minute longer than originally planned in order to make up the deficiency. It's just tough to figure the out the, what uh, the, 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 S4B, the deficiency hundreds digit on the kilometers uh, is. We had uh, approximately a 2,200 pound payload margin uh, uh, for this mission. We used up a little bit of that margin. But we certainly need to slow down. The engine did cut off early, but we did not use up enough to uh, to uh, lose any confidence in our ability to perform. I just the don't want to suddenly dip into the atmosphere without realizing that's what I'm doing. So uh, uh, we have no reason to suspect that uh, we will not have a good uh, TLI burn and uh, fly a perfectly nom nominal mission from this point on. I guess that's all I have in the so, way of. Uh, Let's say uh, that's 380. Comment, uh, feel free to ask any questions if you choose to. Does that look like 380? Maybe. Why, why did we uh, nominally have the uh, main stage engines lower rated than thrust, if I understood you correctly? They weren't, they weren't, well, you know... Oh, uh, we're going up the, again? Uh, the vendor guaranteed... Oh, we're basically circular up here. ...to a certain specification. Hmm. These engines did meet that specification. It just so happens that they weren't quite. Okay. I mean, we're we going from either 210 to 270 or 310 to 370. I'm just Something like that. To you why it took a little um, longer to clear the tower than uh, it had taken on previous missions. Up there. Go ahead. Uh, does the longer time for the S 4B burn affect the timeline at all? I. Uh, I I don't think it affected significantly. I think we're going to be within seconds, certainly not more than a minute or two. Question, Anderson. Uh, do you have that total lift off? I don't even know how much delta V I have right now. 26,000 more than the other? No, I don't. It was, uh, if, if you recall what Apollo 12 was, that 25,600 pounds to it. It was about 6.4, but we'll check that figure for you. Al, up, all right, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Reg. Uh, you told us there was a 22,000 pound payload margin. A 2,200 pound. 200, thanks. How much of that margin has been consumed, please? Uh, the best we can determine, we, we, we used up a significant per, uh, proportion of that So I'm theorizing that now, this is 240 uh, kilometers. Beyond that margin, we still have what we call a three sigma capability. Uh, so we have the full does that look, sigma That looks more like 140 to me. Somewhat of a margin. And at the time I left the... Uh, uh, firing uh, it's so hard to tell. Uh, we did not have all of the numbers in yet. But we're going up, exactly so that's not something we, we had, need to do. We did, we're able to establish that we still had, we did have the full three sigma margin. The, the 2,200 pounds was something that was a little bit of gravy that we had in addition to that. Gravy. <laughs> Why do you have gravy? Now? Yes. For a three sigma condition, in other words, for a worst case condition, if you put all of your three sigma errors together, which is the basis on which we plan our missions, we have enough reserves to handle that. Okay, well, it's not we 140, it's probably 240. Margin, we still do have, the 140 we number have doesn't make any sense. We, to have. we have not well, used we up all our margin or even come close to using it. We have our full three sigma margin. Sanders? Okay, I think to circularize, uh, I go to 2049 right again. now. What where do you get in the extra 22,000 pounds? Is that fuel and if so located where? Uh, the, as far as the margin itself was concerned, well, we flew, we flew with uh, some extra propellants aboard uh, this vehicle. Okay, so 2049, in, uh, if I'm right that it's uh, 240 kilometers of, uh, right now would be circular. So in this case, this will have a... Uh, uh, as a lower end flying the, uh, the three sigma error yeah statistics so that would be three so standard deviations or a one so in a hundred chance of failure of, uh, more than was required to fly the mission Go ahead, uh, do you Does have enough fuel left for the uh, to guide the s for the for the lunar impact that's what that he question. means uh, when i left the uh, firing room the best answer i could get at that time was that uh uh, we should not affect our capability of... Uh, Why he never explains nominal, uh, three sigma error, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, 
Does he assume that all the journalists know this already? We expect to I don't know. The S4B where we had planned to. Ed, over here. Go. Okay, very slight difference between the two sides. Where's the uh, not the the carbon? Okay, two thirty. Uh, Mattingly was in the control room. Was there no concern about his being infectious with German measles? He was in the control room in Houston. Mattingly left, uh, left uh, the Okay, last so time. yeah, we're rough, relatively circular at 240, uh, 230, 240 kilometers. All right, so now what do I have to get this down to in order to get the right periapsis? Could you give us the figures again for the uh, additional burn of the S2 and the S4B? Uh, yes, the... Uh, the S2 uh, inboard engine, the center engine. Uh, I want 26 kilometers. Are you fine? It was supposed to. As a result of that, the outboard engines burn 33.96, roughly 34 seconds longer than they would have had the inboard engine uh, burn for its proper time. It could probably survive more than that, so which is good. But as far as the S4B is concerned. The, uh, the delta in time was about the same, so, 33.97, roughly 34 that seconds That doesn't make longer. any sense. <laughs> okay, we'll take okay one but I mean the velocity well, at one, one end, that's not what fuel, I need. Walt. Okay. Did you have extra fuel in the S4B by any chance uh, as a result of running this weight up, and did that give you a little more leeway? Yes, we had some extra fuel in all three stages. We had about the same amount of locks that we flew on uh, Pete Conrad's mission. We had uh, approximately 9,500 pounds more RP-1 than we had on Apollo 12. And we had more LOX and hydrogen in both the other stages. I knew those figures, but I've forgotten them. Yeah, I, I uh, did not recall that myself. Well, it helped us out. All right, we'll take one mm -hmm. final one up here. Can we have exact liftoff time, please? Well, let me uh, check here. No, that number doesn't make any sense. Okay, hold on, hold on. It was uh, 600 milliseconds late. Two, 213.00.6. Okay, thank you very much. That completes the conference. We should be coming back up. On okay, I get 1,894. Let's hope that that's right. Okay, so. Retro. Here we go. 1,894. I don't know where we're going to land, but. This is painful. We, we're going to have to dump the stage to expose the heat shield. I sure hope I have the rest of the staging right. Okay. Yep. Let's see. So I'm, I'm, this is 240 we're at. 230, 2.20, 2.10, 2.00, 1.90, 1.80, 1.70, 1.60. 150, 140, 130, 120, 110, 100,000, and we're still going down. So I'm going to trust that we've got a periapsis that's in the atmosphere now. I'm going to separate off the previous stage. And it should be off. We're very nimble now. I want surface velocity. I really wish I had it uh, holding retrograde manually. 
And let's hope. Up, oh, we hit the atmosphere all right. It slowed down out of time warp. Okay. It doesn't seem like we're too steep. I get the satellites decouple sideways off the adapter like the real thing. The decoupler will have automate animated actuator slash spring that when you stage it actually pushes the payload off sideways. Okay. Good luck. Thank goodness I still have some coffee. We got re-entry eating. Oh, you have to mention mountains. I was blissfully unaware, or not even thinking about that. I was more worried about my parachute. Okay, all flight controllers, we're five minutes away here from AOS. Uh, it's I'm hoping it's in a different stage. I hope there's another stage with the parachute, and I forget how the staging went. The boost, I guess you you don't have any problems anymore, and uh, you're working with HOSC on the uh, on the go for the propeller. That's correct, Mike. Okay. Yes, we landed on the moon and we have returned. Now I gave myself a lot of extra Delta V. So there is that. Go ahead, flight. That you're going to be tracking here for the first several minutes and this space side pass and come up with your vector. 30,000 meters. Okay, and guidance. I guess there's no further word on the IU update. That's, uh, I mean, you're not going to look at that anymore. Yeah, we'll I understand that. At 145. Oh, you are going to check it again. Okay. We will check it again. Okay, and ENCO, we've got a TV pass here at Mala Network. You ready for that? That's permanent flight. Okay, and we'll be dumping the DSC, and then you'll interrupt that ENCO with a, with a uh, configuration. Roger, flight. Okay, we've got three pads to go up, and we should be okay. In we will try to give them a go for TLI here, uh, leaving the Vanguard over the Canaries. Okay. We're at 20 kilometers. Doesn't seem like the parachute deployed early or anything. Joe? Ten kilometers.
a little bit of rising. Okay. That should be the parachute. SAS off. Can't really see anything. Please. Okay, we've got full parachute deployment. We're at six meters per second. And uh, judging from the comparison between the two altimeters, I think we're over water. Or at least at sea level. Oh, the mission control part of the audio is really quiet at this point. For the Apollo 13 stuff. This is Apollo control ah, just as I was saying that. Minutes. We'll be re-establishing radio communications with Apollo 13 in about 40 seconds. As the uh, station comes within range of the Wimus, Mexico tracking... We station. have splashed down. During the uh, launch phase, the medic reports the following okay, I think I can get out of IVA view now. Crewman. Commander Jim Lovell had a maximum um, heart rate during the launch there we go. of 116. Uh, the Roger. command module pilot Where are we? Out of curiosity. Heart rate of um, oh, I need to uh, uh, pilot Fred Hayes oh, also had a We're on the practically the opposite side of the world from the KS KSC. With a Pluto mission? Why can't I do it with a moon mission? That's gonna be hard anyway. Can you ma- I mean, the problem with the Apollo mission is docking, but maybe we could do it without Apollo and without the docking. If we had a, a moon mission that didn't involve docking, maybe that'd be a thing. Trying to rendezvous and dock, though, that'd be tough. All right. Success! Uh, though, not nearly enough people are cheering and clapping. Okay, boosted your happiness.